everyone, Sabrina here from Scrappy Tales Crafts and welcome to day two of the Scrappy Tales Crafts sneak week for the Spring Fling release. Today I will be showcasing this new 6x6 stamp set called Popping Poppies. Here is the stamp set and as you can see those sentiments interchange in that heart so you can say popping by to say hi, you popped in my mind, or you make life pop. So it's great for Valentine's Day but can really work for any occasion. For this card, I'll be using the Slimline Shadow Box in the Slimline Intricate Lace Borders from the last release. And we'll be creating a more Valentine card just because I'm using some reds and some golds, but it can really be sent any time during the year. I'm going to start by inking up the stamp with my Versafine Onyx Black ink and stamping it directly onto some red cardstock. I am inking up the flowers on the heart, but I don't really need the heart portion, so I'm not really inking up the entire heart. I just want those flowers. And this is a trick if you don't feel like coloring or if you're not confident in coloring, but you want to have dimension on your images. I do this all the time. I like to just stamp on colored cardstock, and then I'll take some ink in my stash to add a little bit of shading right in the center of the florals. So that is what I'm doing for today's card. I ended up stamping way too many flowers than I needed. In fact, because I wanted more of that intricate lace showing through the card, I felt like less was more especially because I added a lot of gold elements and I really wanted those to pop. So here I'm stamping all of the flowers from the stamp set, but I'm again not going to use all of them. I want to have more than I think I need just so that I don't have to stop and re-stamp and re-die cut extra elements. So I also needed a couple leaves for this card, so I'm stamping the two leaf images from the stamp set on green cardstock. And I decided to clear heat emboss all of the images just because Versafine does take a long time to dry and I did not want to risk it smearing. Now you can see I stamped the full heart on white cardstock, but I'm not going to end up using that. I decided to go stamp that heart onto some striped pattern paper just because with the white, I felt that it was borderline Christmas looking with the gold, the green, and the red. So I felt like adding the black and white stripes really made it look more like Valentine's Day. And I'm really happy with how that turned out. So here I'm pouring over the clear powder onto the red cardstock. By the way, the embossing powder that I'm using is by WOW. I have a huge container of it off to the side. And I'm moving right now. Well, I've already moved, but I'm working on my craft room at my new house. So all of my little finger daubers are at my new house. So I'm using these triangular ones from Heartfelt Creations, but they're not the greatest. So I switched over to a teeny tiny little blender brush to blend on some darker red ink right in the center of those flowers. And the ink that I'm using is by Hero Arts. It's one of their ombre inks and included in that ink pad is a brown, red, and green. So for the flowers, I'm using the red and for the leaves, I'll use the brown and the green. But this is just a really quick way to add coloring to your images and give them a little bit of dimension. I could have colored these, but I decided today that I wanted to create a shadow box and creating an interactive card is quite time consuming. So I thought that coloring the images this way would be nice and quick and easy. So here are the leaves. I'm first going in with that lighter green ink and then just at the base of the leaf, I'll add just a tiny bit of that brown. And then once everything is inked up, I will die cut them with the coordinating dies. And this stamp set was again illustrated by my grandma. And this was the most popular stamp set from the design team. So I have a feeling out of all the stamp sets coming out from this release, this one might be the most popular stamp set from the release. So I'm finishing up the last few leaves and then here I'm going to show you the coordinating die set. And then off camera, I gold heat emboss that heart, including the sentiment that says popping by to say hi. You can really say any sentiment with that popping by to say sentiment. So you can say popping by to say I love you or whatever sentiment you have that can fit inside that heart. 
I am going to use the white one that I stamped out earlier to back the striped one to make it a little bit more substantial because the pattern paper I used is quite thin. And I love how that black and white stripe really makes the red flowers pop and it definitely makes the card look less Christmassy. So I did choose a wider striped background just so that my sentiment would pop out more. I was a little bit worried if I went with a really small stripe that it would be difficult to read the sentiment. So I'm glad I went with a wider stripe paper. And now I am just gluing down my leaves. I'm gluing them on top of the ones that are stamped onto that black and white heart. And then I think I'm going to pop up the flowers. So with this last poppy, I will add some leaves behind it just because I had so many on my desk, I figured why not use them? And in case you're wondering, the new Scrappy Tail Spring Fling release will be available on Friday, January 8th. There is some more inspiration on the Scrappy Tails blog and on the Scrappy Tails Instagram. And there will be an Instagram hop on Friday. If you want to participate, there will be prizes along the way. And I will have another reveal video on my channel of the whole collection on Friday. And there will be a giveaway associated with that video. So definitely stay tuned for that. In today's video, I will be showcasing the new pop-up vase die set at the very end because my mom created the pretty much the same card in the pop-up vase and that's what I was inspired by to create this card and I am so excited to showcase that new die. I think you guys are going to love it. It's completely unique and one of a kind. Definitely not something you can find in the industry so I think they're going to be a hit. But for now, for my shadow box card, I am gluing the gold lace on top of the black shadow layer just using my art glitter glue and I wanted to use these lace pieces as the bridges across my shadow box. So I am going to trim them down to eight inches. I think when you die cut them, they're eight and three quarters because they are meant to go on a slimline flat card, but I also wanted you to be able to use them as bridges for your pop-up cards. So here I am, I trimmed it down to eight inches and now I'm just scoring each end at half an inch to create the little tab that my tape will go on inside the shadow box to help these stay in place. And I'm just using my scoreboard here. This one needs to be trimmed a little bit more and then I'll go ahead and score that one at the half inch mark. And then I'll take my double-sided tape and add tape to those tabs. And now I'm going to go ahead and assemble my slimline shadow box. This die set came in the last Scrappy Tales release and included in the die set are all the pieces that you cut out to create the shadow box. So I cut one rectangle from the die set from some solid green cardstock and I'm going to layer that onto my solid base that does not have a window cut from it. I am also going to tape up the decorative panels that are included in the die set to decorate my shadow box. And this is the same stripe paper that I used to stamp out my heart and I did add this panel on the wrong side. That green panel is going to be on the inside of my shadow box and then the stripe panels will be on the outside of my shadow box. So I cut the base out again and then I cut a rectangle from the center to create my window for the shadow box. And if you guys have been following me on my channel for a while, you know that I love acetate. So I'm just going to add some acetate behind the window. This is also going to make it more substantial. So I'm just attaching it with my art glitter glue before I cut it or cut the excess. I do make sure that that glue is nice and dry because it will slide if you start cutting too early. So here I'm just adding a little bit more glue on the corners and then I can go ahead and add my double sided tape. I get a lot of questions about the tape that I use. It is from Uline. 
and it's industrial strength. So whenever I'm creating any sort of pop-up, I like to use this tape. It's super strong. The entire box is essentially held together with these two strips of tape. So definitely use some strong adhesive if you are creating um, this kind of card. So now I am creasing all of the score lines that the die made for me, and then I'll remove my double-sided tape, attach one panel with the tab to the other panel without the tab, and then same thing, I will attach the remaining two ends together to create that box shape. And that's it. That is all you have to do to create a slimline shadow box. When the box is folded flat, it's four by nine, so it does fit in a number 10 size business envelope. And when the box is popped up, it is seven by four inches. So there's plenty of real estate to create some really awesome cards. Um, as you can see, I'm putting that large heart and there's still room to add things. You can create some really awesome scenes with this shadow box. In fact, a lot of you have tagged me on Instagram sharing your projects with this box. And I'm just amazed with what you guys have come up with. It's a really great year round die set to have and it's super easy to assemble. So I am attaching my lace bridges in now and I started with the one in the back and I glued it towards the top of the box and further back inside the box. And then the front lace panel, I glued towards the bottom of the box and more towards the front of the box. So I typically add two bridges and then I will use the actual card base to add more layers to add I guess that sense of depth that you would normally see in a shadow box. So I am now adhering my large heart. I just added glue to the bottom of the heart where it overlaps the lace and isn't that just so pretty? Pretty simple to put together. This card did not take very long because I didn't have to color anything. I am going to tuck in a couple more flowers but for the most part I kept it very simple. I just love how that lace looks peeking through with the gold and the black. So I only added two of those extra flowers that I had. And then I felt like it was missing something just because the inside was relatively simple. So I decided to add a black frame around the entire edge of the shadow box. And I created this by using two of the rectangles from the die set. And then I will just add my glue to that frame and attach it right over my white card base and then I will flip this card around so you can see the stripe pattern paper all around. It's just such a cute card that I think really can be sent anytime during the year. I wanted to show you guys what the slimline gift card holder would look like on the back. I thought I would use it but because those stripes are so wide I felt like I wanted more of the stripe showing. But here I'm just showing you how it works. You can just attach it right to the back. You can add your note card inside that pocket or a gift card. Here I'm showing you how the card folds flat. And I decided since I have so many flowers and leaves left, I'd go ahead and decorate the back of the box. You can see that pattern paper also had a little leaf that I wasn't able to cut off. So this hid that very nicely. You can also add your sentiment to the back of the card if you weren't able to fit it inside that window. I do that quite a lot with my shadow boxes, but that's going to complete the card. Here is the pop-up vase that I was talking about. This is the new die set that's coming for the Spring Fling release. I know that this is going to be a huge hit. I mean, look at this card my mom created. I love that this vase is 360, so no matter which way you turn it or which way you look at it, every angle has something beautiful to look at. It's just such a cool card. So here again it folds completely flat like the other pop-ups and my mom, the engineer behind this design, was able to use the A7 mechanism from the last release which is completely unheard of. <laughs> I don't know how she did it but as you can see I added the A7 mechanism to the bottom and as soon as your recipient takes it out of the envelope it completely pops into place so there will be a tutorial on that vase tomorrow let me know what you guys think of it i am so excited about it there's also another pop-up coming in this release so definitely mark your calendars for friday when the release goes live so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video if you haven't yet already please subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you're notified when i post day three of sneak peek all right guys bye